Hello friends and a heartfelt welcome to Ghostwatch. Today we're checking out a channel called Be Amazed with a video called The Creepiest Things Found in the Woods. Sounds creepy, right? Without further ado, let's check it out in just a moment. Oh, People keep telling me you should <laughs> like spend now. more time in nature. Um, have you seen it out YouTuber there lately? Here. Forget lions, tigers, and bears. Your local woods might have haunted mansions, camo-clad crusaders, or whatever this gross thing is. Grab something to hide behind and maybe run upstairs for a new pair of undies. This one's going to leave you quaking in your boots as we check out some of the creepiest things ever found in the woods. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Whoa. Ghost Cabin. Mama always said, if you see a strange house in the woods, don't go up to it. Yeah, not a problem for me. I never leave my room. <laughs> Forest ranger Mark Andre should have heeded my mother's words of advice, though. He was marking trees in a remote section of Arcata Community Forest when he stumbled across a strange makeshift cabin. Now, when I say remote, we're talking deep in the sticks here. The trees were so thick, Mark could barely spot the structure from 12 feet away. But when I say makeshift, I'm probably doing this shack a disservice. The rural retreat was about 15 feet high and built on a solid concrete block foundation. There was a small porch, an awning, and windows. The plywood walls were covered in black plastic sheeting and camouflaged with leaves. Whoever built this clearly knew what they were doing. Yeah. But strangest of all, there were no tracks, trails, or traces where these materials had been brought in, and no environmental damage at all, as if one day the house had just appeared. Or maybe mm. no one has been there so for a Mark while. did the you know? logical thing. Walk away, right? Right? Nuh uh. He went straight inside. As and inside would I. is where things I would got check it out. really weird. It was a tidy and organized space. The walls were lined with shelves of dried goods, and there were books, a typewriter, fabric, and all other kinds of long term supplies. Clearly, the place was in use. A chill ran down Mark's spine, and he supposedly felt like he was being watched, but there was nobody there, was there? Eyes darting left to right, Mark realized there were several IDs scattered throughout the home, none of which belonged to the same person. Was some kind of master criminal with multiple identities using yeah, this place to hide be. out in, or were several people all using it? If so, why would they have left their identification behind? It yeah. didn't make any sense. One thing was for sure, whoever they were, they... It could be a hideaway, you know, for a hitman or whatever, you know? They were strong and sly enough to carry Agent heavy pieces of equipment without leaving a trace. However, the questions would have to wait. The sun was going down and Mark had no intention of hanging around this place in the dark. Sadly, so camping I. on public property is illegal, so... He attached an eviction notice to the door and returned to the trail. The rest of the investigation would have to wait until another day. Except, that day never came. When Mark returned the following morning, the cabin was gone. Vanished. Huh? Alright, so my first thought was paranormal trickery. Did he say Vanished. The... When Mark returned the following morning, the, following the cabin morning. was gone. Vanished. Huh? All right, so my first thought was paranormal trickery, but it's more likely that whoever was staying there had noticed Mark poking around their home, yeah. seen the eviction notice stapled to the door, and cleared out immediately. Had they been watching Mark the whole time? Ooh, even that explanation. Of course they, uh, they tear down the place, you know? Because uh, if it's someone's hideout, then it's not so private anymore, you know? Nation seems crazy, though. It's no Astoundingly, secret. whoever they were, they'd left nearly no trace. The only proof that the structure had ever been there was the international squatter's symbol for people who unlawfully occupy uninhabited spaces burned into the ground. Whoever was behind the building understandably never came forward, so the mystery remains. But they must have some serious dedication and superhuman strength. Who knows, perhaps they're still out there. 
maybe they're not people at all. I think it's people. Roots of all evil. But that must be... Uh, must be someone's hideout, you know? That needs to leave the country fast with another identification, you know? With so many different passports. I don't know. My guess is uh, it's a hitman, you know? Sometimes if I'm out on a walk, I'll hear a strange noise. It's probably nothing, just the wind through the trees, right? Guys, well, one dog walker in Scotland got the fright of his life when the wind blew through these trees. What? Those trees are lifting up as well. Those trees here are lifting up as well, you know? They do not have deep roots. What? What's going on there? What the F? I've never Does seen anything like that before. Does somebody want to tell me why there's literal freaking earth moving? Is this the end of times, Armageddon? Well, you might have actually seen something similar. You know how oh, after I have a it. heavy storm, there's often giant trees that have toppled over and become completely uprooted? Well, I'd guess that's in the process of happening here. As the wind blows, the canopy of leaves acts as a giant sail, or kite, which creates an upwards force on the tree, tugging its roots up. But these trees most likely have a shallow root system which yeah. traps this top layer of soil and causes it to lift with it. However, because the section of ground lifting up is so big, possibly due to a matted network of roots from other nearby trees, it's holding on for dear life, rather than just toppling over. Anyway, that's my best guess. My other guess is that the dirt is possessed by a vindictive spirit that wants <laughs> to eat this poor man's dog. Yeah. Let's stick with option A. It helps me I like this guy. Night. Harry Harvest. A little birdie told me you're not hiding behind your cushion yet. Think you're tough, do you? Okay, well, I'll have to pull out the big guns. What do you think about this? Ha ha, well, that's a fuzzy little tree. There's it's a mammoth. nothing scary about mammoth Oh my god, kill it with fire. That is disgusting. I thought it was what? a cute fuzzy little tree, but it's actually covered in daddy long legs. Ooh, oh. harvest men like this are relative of the spider. What? And they cluster together in groups to protect themselves from predators. Wow. See, they produce what? a distinctive stinky smell, which apparently becomes almost unbearable when lots of them group. So, so all this hairy stuff is just these spiders? Holy mother of toasters. Together. But I'll be damned if I ever get close enough to find out. Oh. Scary scream. I would throw up I'm right there. I'm a facts there. guy. I try to keep things above all that supernatural mumbo jumbo. However, every now and then a piece of evidence crops up that even shakes old Truth McGee over here. Check this out. Two hunters were out with their grandson deep in the woods of Ontario, Canada, when they heard a disturbing scream. Now have a listen and tell me what you think. That does not sound like an animal what that I know of. What the devil was that? My logical brain says it could just be a bear, but... It doesn't sound like not a bear. even not even Perhaps close. Perhaps it got injured in a trap. However, the people taking the video were seasoned hunters. You'd think if they heard a bear calling out, they'd know what know it what sounds it is, like, yeah. right? And whatever it is, the blood-curdling screams get louder every time, like it's getting closer. And closer. Oh. Run! And closer. 
This gives me the serious creeps. I've done my fair share of animal videos, and I've never come across anything so gruesome sounding. Me neither. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Could this be a Sasquatch sighting? Well, technically, no. Nobody saw anything. Understandably, the two hikers didn't go snooping for any physical evidence. <laughs> I would neither. So we've got no clumps of thick matted fur or giant footprint tracks to back it up, but I can't think of whatever else this might be. Do you have any suggestions? Did these hunters no, do I right don't. to turn on their heels and get out of there quickly? Yep. Or is this a load of hype over nothing? Tell me what you think down below. That That is not an ordinary animal that we know of. Ghost you know? in a cloak. Does where you live have any spooky local legends, like supernatural omens or places with bad auras? I live well, in a boring place. locals of Mollas, Switzerland, who frequent the local woodland, better keep their eyes peeled for a terrifying sight. Ever since the late 1990s, reports have surfaced of a giant humanoid figure wearing military boots, a long camouflaged cloak, and a gas mask stalking the area. Not exactly unsuspicious hiking attire. What could they? That reminds me of that video game called Stalker. You know? Do you know that game? Be up to? Well, nobody knows. Most of the eyewitness accounts only briefly spotted the cloaked figure skulking through the trees before it darted away. Though one lady said she saw it on the trail, stooped down to collect flowers. Huh? Not exactly unsuspicious florist attire, either. Oh. Who could this masked bandit be? I don't know. Well, again, no one knows. You have video evidence? The rumors have them standing well over six feet tall. But aside from that, and their distinctive costume, there's nothing else to go off. So, their true identity has become the subject of much speculation. Some suspect they could be a woman with some kind of mental illness, while others think a man suffering a terrible skin condition that left them disfigured the elephant man. Others still just say they're an extreme survivalist. Can we be sure they're even a person? Or alive? Without much in the way of evidence, the aptly named Ghost of Malls is a captivating unsolved mystery. I want to see video evidence. Though we do have yeah. some evidence, supposedly. This picture was taken in 2013 by an unnamed photographer. The spooky photo was published in a popular magazine and gained a lot of publicity. That could be a However, hunter, shortly yeah. after it came out, someone walking through the woods came across a curious package with a note attached. The note was signed, The Ghost in the Cloak, saying that they knew about the photograph and were disappointed with the attention it had brought to the forest. No longer was it a place of safety and sanctuary, because people would be flocking from all over hoping to yeah. get a glimpse of the ghost for themselves. Inside the package was a camouflage cloak and a vintage gas mask, and since then, no one has claimed to see the ghost again. It disappeared. Perhaps they returned to civilization and are hiding in plain sight, or perhaps they died with the mystery. But maybe, well, maybe just maybe, now in another forest, if you're ever right? out hiking the Swiss forests and think you see a brief flicker out of the corner of your eye, they've returned. House of Horror. Oh, this is going to be a good one. The world of urbex, that's urban exploration, covers all kinds of sinister forgotten buildings tucked out of sight in our towns and cities. There's something altogether more sinister about finding an abandoned house in the woods. Oh, you disagree? Well, get a load of this haunted abode. Deep in Amish country, Ohio, Along crooked, windy back roads that are lucky to see a handful of cars a year, lies an abandoned house hidden deep amongst the thickets. The foundations of this house look solid, considering it could date back to the 1800s, but inside is where it gets a little stranger. Let's check it out. Most of the personal items and decorative features have been picked clean, which is odd. I mean, who's going into the depths of the woods in hopes of robbing something? But odder still, someone has written tributes throughout the home to a Mr. Ron Edwards 9703. Hmm, probably just the work of some low-life vandals, right? Yeah. Except it happens again, and again, and again. And there's even a Frank Edwards Sr., who I'd guess is a relative. Could this have been their family home? If so, what happened? 
The graffiti reads kind of like an obituary. Ooh. Sure, they could have just left, but a beautiful, sturdy home like this that suddenly left abandoned with no one taking it over it seems odd, it's especially in the of the when woods. the exterior of the building has stayed so well preserved. This makes me wonder, perhaps the Edwards family didn't leave here by choice, or perhaps they never really left at all. Oh. Terror on the Trail Unfortunately, the world around us is full of unsavory characters. A hiker posted the terrible tale of their fateful encounter with one such person as they were walking a familiar trail through an isolated part of Pennsylvania. A short portion of the walk passes by someone's cabin. Now, every time our friendly hiker had crossed this section of trail before, the cabin was empty, so he'd proceeded along without any hesitation. However, one time when he reached the cabin, he saw a hulking giant of a man outside grilling. The hiker noticed the man was surrounded by heaps of crumpled beer cans and decided it was best to try not to engage. He's having a party. However, the giant man noticed him and aggressively called out, Keep moving, no food here. Slightly confrontational, our hiker hadn't even asked. Nevertheless, he took this as a warning and continued onwards. A year later, with this strange I. encounter now nothing but a distant memory, the hiker returned to the trail, this time accompanied by his wife, sister, and wife's best friend. As they came up to that same spot on the trail with the cabin, the hiker realized with a sinking feeling that the giant was sitting there, grilling, surrounded by empty beer cans. The man began to make a gesture to move on when he noticed that the hiker was accompanied by three young, beautiful women. Ooh. Suddenly, his whole demeanor switched. <laughs> He stood tall, adjusted his clothes, ran his giant hands through his greasy hair, and beckoned the party over to join him. The hiker refused, but the giant man became very insistent that the group stay for dinner. Thoroughly creeped out, the hiking party hurried off, saying they were only passing through. By now it was getting dark, and the whole group were exhausted. They set up camp not long afterward, cooked themselves a Something tells me that this... Video will get sinister. Meal and then drifted into a deep sleep. In the dead of night, the hiker was suddenly disturbed from his slumber by a loud Told rustling you. noise outside the tent. He froze in his sleeping bag. Was it a bear looking for food? In absolute silence, he reached into his backpack where he had an air horn. With one hand on the tent zipper and another ready to blast the horn, the man readied himself to make as much noise as he could to scare away the hungry predator. But as soon as he courageously That was smart. I never thought of that or heard of anyone doing that before. Taking an air horn, you know, to scare off animals, you know, bears and wolves and whatnot swooshed the zipper around and began blasting the horn, he saw no bear. His stomach churning, he realized it was the man from the cabin trying to get into one of their tents. Uh -huh. Startled, the giant man you began stumbling and staggering man. away as quickly as he could. As he disappeared into the forest, the hiker's heart what was, was he up to? so hard, it felt like it might burst out of his chest. What the what F was the he up to? Doing? Terrified from all the commotion, the rest of the hiking party packed up and immediately continued They're the trail in here. darkness, hoping to create as much distance from the grotesque man as they could. Luckily, they escaped without ever seeing him again. Whew, that was a close call. That man was definitely up to- Imagine if that hiker did not wake up. What could have happened? Oh. That's a scary thought. Something suspicious, and I don't even want to know what. No, me neither. Love Shack. Eh, you're probably feeling rather spooked right about now. So, bring it in. That's right. Nothing sends the chills away like a love and hug. But nothing brings them rushing <laughs> back quite like this creepy bunker. Ooh. Supposedly off Highway 10, just west of Durand, Wisconsin, someone sprayed free hugs on the side of this small building. Would you go in there? Building. <laughs> I would alert, not. I don't think anyone's giving free hugs in there. There are all kinds of horrible stories surrounding this place, from hauntings to kidnappings to things too dark for me to say on YouTube. 
But is there any truth to it all? Well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't go in there if you paid me. However, after the original photograph of the bunker was shared online back in 2014, speculation around it grew massively, and it became something of a meme. It could be that these so-called eyewitness accounts were written by somebody who lived three states away and never left their basement bedroom. However, finding someone brave enough to corroborate this isn't easy going. What do you think? Is this an out-of-hand meme, or is there more inside I don't think there's. pair of arms? I don't think there's anything inside. Someone just came by and sprayed this, you know. There's nothing in there. ...to wrap around you. Doomsday Well, Peppa. would you go in there? I would if not. If you've never heard of Peppa Pig, I don't blame you. It's a I British have. animated TV show aimed at preschoolers, centering around the titular pig and her family. Okay, nothing creepy about that, right? What's creepy is seeing a fully grown man wearing a Peppa Pig mask, standing on the edge of the woods, watching you. What's that's wrong exactly with what you? exactly what happened to a group of kids playing on a local playground in Ipswich, you UK back in 2019. The kids were having fun doing what kids do, when suddenly one of them noticed a strange figure lurking amongst some nearby trees. It was clearly a man from his build, but his face was obscured by the strange mask. Transfixed, what? the children stared at the pig man. Then slowly, he extended a hand toward them and beckoned them to get closer. What that creep. was enough to snap the kids out of their trance. Bolting what in the opposite creep. direction, they ran to their parents to tell them what had happened. But just as the concerned moms and dads understood the gravity of the situation, they heard a transit van speeding off into the distance. When they looked over at the woods, the figure was gone. It's just the worst kind of people, you know. Oh. He wants to hurt kids? Why, why the F would you want to hurt kids? What's wrong with you, man? That is, I can't get it into my head. How you can get so disturbed that you could do unspeakable things to kids, you know. It makes me so angry, I'm sorry. Thankfully, those kids were mm. smart enough to run. But if they'd actually walked up to that weirdo, who knows what might have happened. I don't want to All know. All I know is my hype for Peppa Pig season eight has diminished considerably. <laughs> Please uh, don't hurt me. A dream of mine is to own some land. You know, have a little place of my own, little private space away from everyone. But can you be sure that your haven is really as protected as you think? One Reddit user got the shock of their life when they were wandering through the trees out the back of their home and noticed someone had set up a little camp in a clearing. But this wasn't just any camp. Take a look for yourself. Huh? Is this campsite plucked fresh from the seventh circle of hell? <laughs> it looks demonic. Luckily for the homeowner, just a this teepee. probably isn't some kind of satanic yurt blighting their woodland. It's more likely to be an illegal makeshift hunting lodge. Having said that, I don't know if that's lucky after all. Whoever set up camp here is definitely either horned or armed and eagerly looking for any signs of life. Yikes. Someone brave would probably confront whoever was behind this, but... Hey, that could be, you know, someone just trying to survive in the woods. Right? I have often considered doing that. You know. Just go into the woods, make a living, you know, hunting, fishing. Just taking care of myself and don't... And have no worries, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? For a time? Me? Nah, I'm contacting my real estate agent and moving. Spooderman. Spooderman. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Toilet time is my alone time. I don't want anyone to interrupt me. Especially not anything like this sleepy Reddit user had to deal with. They were camping out while hiking a trail in Hawaii and woke up super early in the morning to, uh, numero dos. So, 
They hazily made their way over to the porter potty, trying not to wake anyone. It was still dark when they were done, so they were fumbling around for the TP and decided to flick their headlamp on to aid their search. But that's when they saw it. Dangling down oh. right in front of their face was a massive banana spider. All I'm saying is, good job they'd already done their business. Slowly and carefully, trying not to alarm the eight-legged arachnid, the hiker reached for the one ply. However, the swinging beam of light from their head torch sent the spider into a frenzy. Oh. Our horrified hiker began flailing about in panic, and the spider dropped down and landed, uh. wait for it, right in their underwear. Oh no. Shaking wildly back and forth oh, to no, no avail, oh, they burst no, out oh, of the no, porta potty, oh, no. screaming with their pants still <laughs> down by their ankles. Ugh. Eventually, they did manage to shake the spider loose. Woo. But imagine everyone else on the site poking their heads out of their tents to see someone screaming and running around dressed like Winnie the Pooh. How embarrassing. And if you don't want to get caught with your pants down looking like a doofus, subscribe to my YouTube channel before anyone notices. I have. It's the best way to keep up to date with all of my amazing content. Yeah, mine too. And it would be so embarrassing if you missed out. Hey, great. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> Conniving Cult My local woods are full of all sorts of hidden... T Conniving? I never heard that word before. Do you know what it means? Tell me in the comments below. I have no clue what it means. But I thought I was good at English. Terrors. I can't walk through without hearing something rummaging in the leaves or snapping a nearby twig. Sometimes the scariest thing of all isn't what you don't see, though. It's what's in plain sight. In New Hampshire, one dog walker found this strange pagan shrine in the woods. Now, I've never been into the whole Ouija board contacting the dead thing. What would I say? Yo, late Auntie Patricia, <laughs> hit those like and subscribe buttons. <laughs> nah. But whoever made this shrine clearly is into it. They've ceremoniously arranged all their creepy trinkets and artifacts in the woods. These shrines are typically used for worshipping pagan gods and goddesses, casting spells, or saying chants and prayers. But that inverted pentagram at the top makes me nervous. Yeah. It's a symbol often so affiliated with the Church of Satan. Cripes. That's some bad magic. Hopefully this is a lone actor practicing their craft by themselves, and not a sign of an evil coven meeting up in the woods. Hopefully now not. That would be really creepy. Yeah. Alien abduction. <sighs> You know, I had the strangest dream last night. This strange green light came through my bedroom and I felt like I was floating. Next thing I remember were the bright flashing lights and then funny looking men kept probing me with their long green <laughs> fingers. Ah, all of a sudden, I'm in some strange forest, wandering about in the dark, wearing nothing but my PJs. And wait a minute, I'm still in the forest wearing my PJs. Sheesh, what happened? And how do I get out of here? Ho hold on, what's this thing in front of me? It looks like some sort of alien teleporter. Is what the F is that? that? If I just hop in the middle here, I can- Whoa, whoa! All right, all right, <laughs> I can fa- Have you ever seen anything like that? What the F was that? Yes, I'm just kidding. There was no alien abduction last night. I fell asleep on my couch eating Cheez-Its. So, wait. What's the weird looking teleporter thing? What the F is that? Oh, this? This is a sculpture at Pride of the Valley Sculpture Park in Surrey, England. Okay. It's been doing the rounds online as some kind of alien artifact, but trust me, it's not. The park has all kinds of, uh, strange installations. Yep, I've seen enough. This place definitely gives me the creeps. Eyes everywhere. Do you ever get the feeling you're being watched? Whether you're cooking in the kitchen, buying groceries, or walking home somewhere in the dark, can you not shake the sensation that someone's looking over you? The government spy- Whoa there, sorry, <laughs> that was my uh, nut job brother, Be Deceived. He's trying to get into the narrating game. 
So I uh, said, no conspiracy the stuff. Paper hat. Uh, shockingly, though, my tinfoil terror of a brother might be onto something. Uh, Next foil. time you're walking through the woods, look up. You might see this. Uh, who, who, who is that? What? Is he warping out of the tree? I don't know whether to run or accept his quest. Sadly, <laughs> I don't think this is a mythical forest guardian sending me on an adventure. It looks to me like a creepy sculpture someone's added high up on the tree. But it's not the scariest sculpture I've seen. Check this out. Yuck. What? These horrifying looking faces look gross from a distance, but they're even worse close up. Who have time to do these kinds of things? Get a job or something, you know? A real job. They're most likely wasp or hornet's nests. When the sculpture was first installed, it probably looked quite similar to how it looks now. But uh, even as time passed and the insects took over and built out their nests, it kept its original shape. That's awesome. And also really, really gross. I wouldn't want to live inside someone else's face. What am I, Squidward? <laughs> Wasteful Water Ever since I watched that movie, The Ring, where the creepy girl climbs ah. out of the well, let me tell you, I've never... That movie, first time I saw it, I couldn't sleep for days. I was very... I was much younger back then. I'm still young, you know. That movie is creepy as... If ever been so grateful to have faucets, but that's just a made-up story, right? Haunted wells aren't really a thing. Hmm. Tucked deep in the hills of Langdon Country Park near Basildon, England, is one of the UK's most haunted hovels with a very dark past. Around the beginning of the 20th century, a local farmer constructed a well on his land to source water for his farm. Unfortunately, it turned out the water was laden with minerals, giving it a horrible taste. He decided it wasn't even safe to give his animals. However, the water's <laughs> discovery alerted businessman Edwin Cash, who had a lucrative and ethically questionable get-rich-quick scheme. Cash dug five wells on land he purchased and began bottling and selling the horrible water to chemists for its medicinal benefits. According to him, Farmer Cash's Venge water could cure all sorts of ills from immune issues to stomach problems and even nervous disorders. Except it didn't. All the minerals did was make people ill. Now here's where the facts get a little twisted. Some say Cash's wells shut down after a facility to treat patients with tuberculosis was built higher up the hill. It was feared that contaminated water from the facility would flow down and affect Cash's already filthy water. Oh. However, others believe the wells stayed open and Cash continued bottling up the diseased water anyway. What? Ugh. What's Whatever wrong Whatever the with truth, you, man? today, only one well remains. And paranormal experts say they feel the presence of countless spirits near it, including the ghost of Mr. Cash. Supposedly, Mr. Cash ter- Maybe it's the ghost? Of all the people that died from drinking that foul water. Terrorizes those who've come to expose his revolting operation. And visitors and ghost hunters alike have felt ghostly children, likely from the TB facility, coming up to them and holding their hands. Which is creepy, oh. but doesn't sound so bad. They're the lucky ones. Other visitors have uncontrollably burst into tears when near the dilapidated well, and even experienced manic violent outbursts. But the least fortunate are the cynics who don't believe until they've felt a little push in their back as they're staring down into the well. Ooh. Oh. No, that's enough of that. <laughs> I knew something wasn't right with this place from the moment I set eyes on it. Tapping in the Night they often say the scariest creatures come out when the moon is full. Now, whether you believe that or not, that's up to you. But keep your ears pricked, because what I'm about to tell you might save your life one day. Just like it did for Natalia Cara de Medeiros. Natalia On a late Cara summer's evening in the jungles of Pacuare, Costa Rica, Natalia was getting ready to call it a night, when she suddenly heard a strange tapping sound on the deck outside. 
No stranger to the flora and fauna, she assumed it was a passing critter and it would move on. Except it didn't. The tapping continued, growing louder and more frequent. Oh. Peering out the window, she nervously looked across the moonlit yard and saw nothing. After taking a deep breath and reassuring herself she was just being paranoid, Natalie went about doing her business. But after a few minutes, the tapping returned. This time, it was coming from the front door. Putting on her shoes and grabbing her phone, she crouched behind the door. Her heartbeat was racing, da 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 Steadying herself to confront whatever hideous creature was closing in on her, she gripped the door handle, swung the door open, and... Who, uh, who's there, man? Hello? What? Are those crabs? <laughs> what? Crabs? You Isn't had me the on the of edge the of my seat for crabs? Is that in the middle of the woods? Why are there crabs? Now, before you get too mad, this is a cool phenomenon, and you gotta admit, they look pretty creepy. During the full moon, ambient lighting is much brighter, which makes it far easier for predators to spot the crabs. So a few days before the lunar cycle reaches its peak, crabs come out and eat more than usual to fatten up. Then they spend the next few days hiding out and living off their reserves. As much as they're not dangerous, if I stepped out on my porch and saw a load of these things <laughs> scuttling around, yeah. I'd be locking myself in for the foreseeable. That's straight from a horror movie. <laughs> Sweet treat. Uh, why is it always on a long walk that I start getting sleepy and need a little pick-me-up? Why has no one had the idea of building a nice candy store in the woods yet? A little handful of candy corn would sort me right out. Well... In a wooded area outside Edinburgh, Scotland, this creepy store appeared. Yeah, that's what? not what I'm looking for. It looks kind of like the place where Hansel and Gretel would have to lock a witch in the oven. Thankfully, there are no witches nearby, but that in itself isn't enough to warrant trusting it. See, from I a distance, this place might look like a candy-colored Disney princess paradise, but the closer you get, the more twisted and disheveled the building appears. There's graffiti plastered all over. The sign is upside down. Everything is an anxious state of disarray. And that's before we talk I'm about in. Mimi. We are closed. <laughs> oh, who's Mimi? Well, Mimi is the central figure this store is dedicated to. The inner shelves of this grim fairy tale store are lined with Mimi dolls for whatever deranged what? human being would want to own one. But the thing is, you can't buy anything. This isn't a real store. It's an art installation by Scottish artist okay. Rachel McLean. McLean wanted to critique the culture of youth and newness by taking various fairy tale tropes and showing them in a state of decline and disarray. I'd say she did a good job on that front. Whew. It's a relief to know that this place isn't real. Imagine you didn't know that this was art. And you just go into the woods and you see this. How would you react? What would you think? I have no clue. I have to think about it. Well, after all, now what do I do with all of these spare breadcrumbs? Staircase to nowhere. Oh, I think I heard about this. We've covered some pretty eerie things so far, but this next phenomenon is worldwide. Yeah. Throughout the world's woodlands, people keep discovering strange... They just appear and disappear just as quick, quickly as they appeared. Staircases that lead to nothing. Sure, it's possible that at some point they were part of old buildings that didn't last, and many don't look they like just they belong in buildings. Again. All kinds of strange macabre stories have arisen about them. Some have claimed that while working in the deep, dense forest, they've stumbled across sets of staircases which seemingly moved around in the night, yeah. leaving behind mysterious charred markings on the ground. There are even reports about that this. people have climbed the structures, staying for what they thought was a few minutes, then came down to discover that years had passed. Ha. Huh? Some speculate that the stairs serve as a kind of pulpit for black magic or satanic practices, I don't know about that, but whatever the real deal is, 
I just can't That's shake weird. the feeling that it's at so least weird. some of these stories hold some weight to them. So, if you're out and about and you stumble across a set of stairs, turn around. Once you put your foot on that bottom step, there might be no going back. After that, who knows what might happen to you. Woo! And just <laughs> like that, we've reached the end of the video. I don't know about you, but I'll be sleeping with the light on for the next month. Which of these creepy discoveries spooked you out the most? Let me know in the comments. Yeah. Until next. Tell me as well. Some of these videos were fun. Some were creepy. Some were scary. Some were just, you know, had a good explanation, like art in the woods. Tell me what you think. And thank you all for watching. Check out my playlist or the recommended video. Or if you. Press my portrait down there, you subscribe to the channel, and I greatly appreciate that. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, bye bye.